We've called in a psychic, Lord Rudy, to see if he could help us out. Chuck Leonard's missing. You got any idea? Any kind of visions or anything? You know, he's just going through a challenging time right now. Challenging but, time? Uh, but he's good. He's yep. doing good, okay. So uh, I predict he'll be calling in within an hour or so. Would you predict that his pay will be docked? Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Bill the psychic is chiming in. So anyway, Chuck wanted to be here. He knew you are coming. You're his good friend. He's your good friend. And, Absolutely. And he enjoys having you. And he wants to have you back every couple of weeks. That sounds, and dispense, I am so ready. I, to spend some kind of this special knowledge that you might have. Right. Well, um, as we had discussed, uh, going into astrology, forecasts, and uh, other things, spiritual teachings, absolutely. Now, is this astrology for real? I mean, I don't know if I totally buy into it. Is that a bad thing, or is that insulting to somebody who's into that? Well, so I always tell people that when it comes to fate, destiny, we, do, we are in control of certain things. Some things are the hand of God mm -hmm. or goddess. Uh, we can't change those things. Those things we won't be able to change, or sometimes not even, even as the most psychic of psychics won't be able to see certain things because hmm. it's not for us to change. However, astrology is kind of like a GPS or uh, a map when, when we are born or when the soul actually enters the body. It's almost like a time stop, like a clock is stopped. And all the stars, all the constellations, all the planets are in a certain area, in certain houses, per se. And um, each planet has its own properties or influences, whether it be love, money, uh, or challenges, things of that nature. So it helps us when we get natal charts done or have forecasts done, it helps us in general just to uh, see if any you know, challenges we might be getting ready for to deal with so we can prepare for those or also to be ready for blessings that are coming into our lives. So, so it gets you so ready. Now, it's like anything a science. I know a little about astrology, so I don't want to put my thoughts on it, but I do know that the gravitation of planets do affect the Earth. The moon, Absolutely. especially, you know, we'll pull water. I mean, it's got right. to affect our, right. we could pull the blood in our head one way or another. Right. Close, something to, like close to 80 percent of our body is made of water. So absolutely. Uh, so the tides know, gonna, in the, the ocean tide. are caused by the moon. Maybe tides in our life can be caused absolutely. by the planets. Absolutely. And speaking of the moon, so the moon also travels through each house of the zodiac or the astrology houses. So the moon is actually in cancer right now. So a lot of uh, and that's another thing connected a little bit to Chuck, maybe just a lot of challenges with the home, family, mm -hmm. uh, also a lot of things of the emotional body. So it stays in each house for about two days. So today and tomorrow will be, the moon will be in cancer. So Now Chuck's birthday was September 1st. Does that have any kind of meaning? or? So September 1st. So him being a Virgo. Um, is that bad, being a Virgo? Is that like <laughs> one of the bad ones? <laughs> no, but absolutely it's uh, amateur. So we could be, what I've noticed is some, a lot of earth signs are kind of like fixed or so maybe it's just uh you know us uh learning how to know when it's ready to let go of certain things mm -hmm. closing doors so that new doors can open right well for some reason only good things happen to chuck i mean he meets a beautiful woman they get married well, that's, they're gonna have a baby you know i TV actually station calls and says we want you to be on our talk we want you to have a talk show on our tv station things just seem to go chuck's way he didn't show up today, and I'm here to take over. Things just work out for him. <laughs> well, <laughs> blessings are blessings. blessings. <laughs> but is that part of the whole astrology thing? How well, well okay, so let's get born to uh, the chart. So every, you know, it's not about putting every, every person of every zodiac sign has certain characteristics. However, it all, once again, goes back to your actual native chart. And that is actually where you were born, the time, the hour, the year. And that is, and each planet is in a different house, or so that's how you differentiate, whether it be your moon sign, your rising sign. So it breaks down more into a science of like more personal to, you know, instead of just a broad range of, you know, the same zodiac sign. Now, I tend to dominate with all my ramblings. Is there something you <laughs> wanted to present today? Uh, well, actually, um, besides discussing like, being on here every two weeks, I just wanted to get into. It seems a lot of, and it's, it seems like it's universal right now, a lot of, you know, we are in the age of Aquarius, and basically what that means is streamlining, you know, things that no longer serve us, uh, we're being forced to, but it's a good thing for us to let go of. 
but also it's teaching us to be open and receptive to blessings. So a lot of, seems like a lot of questions I've been getting or readings I've been doing have been about relationships, like mm -hmm. uh, obstacles in communication or people pulling away or separations. So I just brought a couple of, some few candles just to share in regards to uh, things with relationships and love. So uh, the first one I want to start off with is um, the road opener candle. Okay. Um, and candles are basically, uh, it's a focal point to help us to, um, you know, to tune in with exactly what we're trying to, you know, manifest or the thought forms. So uh, somebody would light these candles? Right. So basically a road opener is to open up communication or to clear the path. Like, say, for example, in relationships, you know, if the communication isn't too good or if we're not getting from our, you know, spouse or partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, like, you know, what area we need to work on or... So you or might light this candle. So, you, so you would do it on a Wednesday. Wednesday is ruled by Mercury, which is, which rules communication. Mm -hmm. And also to clear, excuse me, to clear the path. So... Um, you light that, it Wednesday, let it go for a few days? Um, or do you you always want to... Uh, be responsible because you are working with fire, but uh, uh, he's a I, psychic. You know, I tell you something. So, um, when I light my candles, I always have a safe place where I once I light them, I let them burn until they're gone. Some they're gone. So, some people, but this candle might last how long? Um, sure. if you burn it continuously, probably like about three to four days. Three to four days. And does it have certain elements in there that help with this road widening thing? Well, the color, uh, Correspondence is, of course, orange is the planetary color of Mercury. Then you get into green, which would be Venus, which is for, it, Venus encompasses a lot of things, uh, prosperity, love, um, and just blessings in general. And then we have, it goes into the yellow. So your focal point will be clearing the, clearing the blockage. Mm -hmm. When it gets to the green, your focal point will be the blessings of being open and receptive to the blessings that you're wanting. And then when it gets into the yellow, actually, that's kind of like solar energy or sun, which is for success. So if somebody's maybe having a little relationship issues and they're just having trouble getting past the barriers, right, blockages. this candle being lit in the home might help. Right. And once again, it's the focal point also connecting to whether it be the supreme being, god, goddess, or just your higher self. Now, Bill's saying we just have a couple minutes left, so take us through a couple more things you've um, here. Also... Friday is the actual, uh, is ruled by Venus, which is, you know, rules all operations of love. So red candles, green candles, pink candles, I brought a red one. Mm -hmm. uh, red is good for passion, uh, for attraction, uh, things of that nature. Pink would be more for the actual love aspect. Uh, and green is actually the planetary influence of Venus. I see. So the, or the color correspondence. Oh, and that one's me. red and green. Yeah, right. Now this is... What we call a hummingbird candle and this actually has you know a prayer on the back and a hummingbird of course we all know is attracted to sweetness so it's uh kind of like a totem animal or spirit guide a nature guide of uh instilling sweetness back into relationships and also you know it works with nature the balances with flowers so it's you know also brings balance healing into a relationship so this is also you would burn this on a friday uh this is more to bring once again bring back passion uh, to heal a relationship, things of that nature. And once again, I brought these because it seems like a lot of people are going through a lot of challenges right now. And where can people get these candles? Uh, at any uh, local metaphysical store. Uh, no, it's a metaphysical, that's something that actually exists. Right, actually here um, in the Blessed Tower District, there's um, the Brass Unicorn. Brass Unicorn, they might have these candles. Right? Absolutely. Now, uh, so you're uh, way out of time, but you're gonna come back every couple weeks with Chuck and bring in some more enlightenment? If if you guys are willing, I would love to be on Chuck here every wants week. You. Chuck <laughs> wants you. If we could find Where are you, Chuck? We brought in a psychic to find Chuck, so go out, meditate a little, see if you can find him, and get him here for the end of the show. Absolutely. Thank you. Really. All right, thank you so much. All Bye. right.